everyone and welcome to my little corner so recently I found this book on Amazon and I was intrigued right away so this is the Harry Potter crafting wizardry and it includes over 20 DIY crafts now you know I'm crafty I used to do so much DIYs in this channel and I kind of stopped doing it but I thought it would be fun to make some DIYs from this book. So the DIY that I chose from this book to do today, and I already bought all of the materials I needed, is this Patronus Charm Lighted Shadow Box. Now this looks amazing. I really wanted to do it myself. Now one thing that I have to mention about this book while I was skimming through and selecting some DIYs that I wanted to make, some DIYs require a different skill level, but most of them do require a more advanced level of DIY. So I guess if you're used to doing stuff like that, it might be easier for you. But if not, it might be a little bit harder. Also, a lot of DIYs here, they require a lot of materials. Some of these things have like a long list of materials. So if you're not again if you're not used to doing DIY and you don't have those kinds of materials you're probably gonna have a long shopping list even though I already have like a lot of DIY general things I still had to buy quite a lot of things so yeah just keep that in mind so as you can see there's a lot of really cool stuff here there's even a how to make an Ollivander's wand box and a lot of instructions on how to make those a chocolate frog as you can see I heard I already annotated which ones I actually wanted to do there's also how to make parchment some feathers this one looks really cool and I might do it in a second video maybe some potion bottles there's a monster book of monsters even a golden snitch This one looks really cool too. And then at the end, they also include some template cutouts that you're gonna need for some of the DIYs. So like if you wanna do the chocolate frog box, there's already a cutout for it. So to make this shadow box, we're gonna need the templates that are included in the book and we're gonna need a shadow box now of course this is the most important part of it uh, I got this one at Walmart for $14 it was actually hard to find you need a 12 by 12 inch shadow box white I guess I don't know if you actually need a white one but I wanted the same as the picture I wanted a white one now, one thing that it says on the instructions, it said um, shadow box frame with matte board. This one doesn't have a matte board, so we're going to have to figure something out for that. I couldn't find another shadow box. We're also going to need tracing paper, white cardstock, double-sided tape, a quarter inch dowel, wooden dowel, glue, some LED string lights, a pencil, and a craft knife. Now, I don't have a craft knife and I didn't buy one, so I'm thinking that a box cutter is gonna do the same, hopefully. So that's all the materials we're gonna need. And let's get started by following the instructions on the book. So the first step says to lay a piece of tracing paper over template A, Tape down the paper along the edges and trace with a pencil. So we are going to do that. I'm going to take off a sheet of this. I'm actually going to cut it in half so that it's easier for me to tape it down. And now we just gotta trace it.
Okay, so now that I traced the first template A, I'm going to take it off carefully. Okay. We are supposed to trace this onto white cardstock, but before we go there, I want to actually trace all of the images first and then do everything at once. Okay, so now that we have everything traced, it says lay the tracing paper over the center of a sheet of cardstock and using a craft knife carefully cut out the template. And we got to do that for everything that we traced. Okay, now the book doesn't specify this, but from what I remember from school, by using the tracing paper a lot. So we traced here, that means that now you got to turn this over so that the pencil, it's actually facing down. And then you tape it again. And now you gotta trace it over on the back side of the tracing paper. Two hours later. Okay, now the next step is to actually cut out everything from the white cardstock using a craft knife. I actually don't have a craft knife, so I hope it, a box cutter is gonna do the same job, hopefully. Although this is gonna be very tricky because this is very tiny. So this might be actually the hardest part. So let's just try to do it and see what happens. One eternity later. Okay, so it's been a very long time. This was very hard to do. It took me a really long time to do this. I don't know if it would, if it would have been easier with the craft knife. But anyway, I did it. It is not perfect. On one of those, I accidentally ended up cutting this wrong. So I had to glue it. Or not glue it. I had to use tape to put it back together. It's fine. We're still gonna keep going, so as you can see I got all three in the Deathly Hallows. So now we're gonna move on to the next step on the book. So we are on number four, cut a wooden dowel into four pieces of equal length, each as long as the size of the shadow box. Then cut the four pieces in fourths to make 16 small spacers. So I have the wooden dowels. Um, now the question is, how am I going to cut these wooden dowels? Uh, what, do you, what do you use to cut wood? I don't know if the box cutter is going to work. We're going to have to try something out. It says that the four parts need to be the length of the sides of the box. So I'm just going to measure the sides, but I don't know if it should be here. Okay, so as you can see, the wooden dowels were no for me. It's not working out because I don't have a saw. I don't have anything that is able to cut through this. Maybe because they're too thick. 
I don't know, it's not working out. So I'm gonna do an alternative. If you have something where you can cut the wooden dowels, feel free to go ahead with the plan, how, how the book says to do so. My alternative right now is to make these quarter inch strips and roll up the card, this is cardstock. So I'm just gonna roll it up, put some tape into it to make these little spacers. Cause that's the whole purpose for the dowels is to make little spacers between the layers. So now I need to make 16 of these. So I finished up doing 16 of these, roll them up and then I tape it together. Now the next step on our instructions says to tape four wood spacers to the back of each cut cardstock piece for templates A, B, and C. So I am going to do that now. I'm going to try to use the double sided tape. So this is the back. So I'm guessing that I'm supposed to lay them like this. On each corner okay so I'm guessing it's gonna look like this now the tricky part is I have to put four pieces on this I mean if anything I would say three pieces on every corner because then it will be visible if I put it anywhere else so yeah this one's a little tricky I did it like this I'm only gonna put three of them so we're on to step number six on our instructions it says layer each cardstock layer each cardstock piece into the shadow box in order add a blank cardstock piece after piece D so I already cut just a square from the same size that's gonna go after template D now the tricky part is figuring out how to do this in the shadow box okay so the issue now so I have the shadow box right but what came in the back is this is this fabric covering this styrofoam so I'm supposed to have a like a mat or like a frame which I'm probably gonna have to do it myself now my paper as you can see it's not square like this so I'm gonna have to work something out and then these pieces are gonna go in the middle of it okay so what I'm actually gonna do is put all of this together first so on top of the little dowels that I made I'm gonna put a little piece of tape again because they're supposed to be taped together okay after putting the tape on top of the dowels we just need to assemble it from front from back to front so we put the extra square and then template D which is the Desley Hallows and we gotta try to center it as much as possible there and now C okay guys so I encountered another problem so as you saw I cut this shape around it because in the book it's not a square you see all of these are squares but this one just comes as the triangle so I cut around the triangle it doesn't say that it needs to be a square but now I'm realizing it has to be a square otherwise if I just put it here this one that's supposed to go on top will just be right on top of the Deathly Hallows there should be a space for it to have a space it needs to be a rectangle or a square underneath if you know what I mean this is all very confusing the book is not clear on this 
It doesn't tell us, it doesn't warn us that the Deathly Hallows is supposed to be a square, even though it doesn't seem like it should be. And then it just tells us to put everything together and none of it makes sense. So what I'm going to do is make another one of these. I already have this ready. I'm going to center it and then I'm going to trace it and I'm only going to cut the inside part. I'm not going to cut around it. So I'm only going to do the inside parts and now I'm going to cut this again. Okay, so I know I cut this, isn't it like, it's not 100%, not even near, maybe not even 90%. We're going to go with it, and I'm going to put some dowels on my paper makeshift dowels and put it in the back, just like I did with the other ones. Okay, so now let's try to assemble this again. So we start off with the blank square and then put the Deathly Hallows on top. Try to press it. So as you can see, there's a space in the middle. Then we have template B. And finally, template A, which has the owl. Okay, so we end up with this construction. And as you can see, there's space in between every layer. So when this gets light up, lit up, it's probably gonna look pretty cool. Hopefully it will look better than it looks <laughs> like this. Okay. So now we have to actually put this inside of our shadow box. Okay, so I encountered another issue on the next step, which is when I have to build everything together. So on the materials, the, the shadow box was supposed to come with a matte board. So the background is supposed to be white, which already this is not. Also, there's supposed to be a white frame around it because our construction is going to go in the middle. So I got none of those things. But I found a solution. So I have these designer papers, which are 12 by 12, exactly the size I need. And as you can see, the back of the paper is white. So I'm going to use these as the background. So what I'm going to do is actually try to tape this to this background so it's more sturdy. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put four pieces, like big long pieces around. I hope it works. Okay, so now I'm going to try to put this here. Okay. So that worked. So this is the background. I'm gonna need a frame. So this is gonna go in the middle, but this border is so much larger than the border that shows in the picture in the book. If you look at the book, look at this. You see this little border here? That is so much smaller than the size of this. I followed all the correct sizes. They told me to buy a 12 by 12. I, I didn't resize any of this. This is all traced on top. But somehow this is... The center picture is a lot bigger. So I don't know what went wrong. I don't know what's wrong with these instructions. So I'm going to try to attempt to make this border here using some paper which I'm going to cut to fit I actually have like this really long art paper and it's really thick like cardstock or even thicker than cardstock 
So I'm just gonna take one of these pages and I'm gonna try to measure and cut to fit the box. So it looks like the inside is 11 and a half. So let's try to cut an 11 and a half square from this big piece of paper. So now the next thing I need to do, now that I have the square, is I need to cut a square inside so that this will be visible from here. But um, the thing to pay attention is I shouldn't cut the square exactly. Like I don't want this to go through the image. Like it could like go all the way down. So I want it to overlap just very, very slightly with this so that it covers just a tiny bit around it just in case you know I don't want this to actually like fall through and go all the way to the back I want this to stay in the front does that make sense I hope so so these squares are four and a half uh, by four and a half so I want to cut maybe centimeters would be more accurate with this Let's say that I want to cut, so this is like 11 centimeters. So if I take off this little excess from here that I want to overlap, I'm just going to say that this is 11 centimeters. And that gives me probably the right allowance to overlap just a tiny bit. So this is the math that I did to find the center. So this square is 29 centimeters. And I want an 11 centimeter square in the middle. So minus the 11 centimeter square, it's 18 centimeters. Divided by two, so you get the measurements for each side, you get nine centimeters. So you're gonna have nine centimeters here, the 11 centimeter square, and then the nine centimeters again. Okay, so since it's really hard to center it in the back because the back is bigger than this one that goes inside, I'm trying to reverse center this. I try to center it on the cutout and then I'm going, since I have the tape here, I'm just going to try to pressure it. So yeah, it did, it did stick, but hopefully it's in the right place. Okay, so the next thing to do is to adhere the LED strip to the sides of the frame. And yeah, we're going to secure that with the tape. So I'm guessing that we're just going to tape it around the sides of the frame here. Okay, so I'm having another pivot. <laughs> so I bought these fairy lights slash string lights. But they're really long, as you can see. There's a lot to unroll here. These are nine meters long. It's gonna have to wrap around endlessly. Luckily, I already had some string lights. And this one that I already had, as you can see, like it's just this. It's so much smaller. So I'm gonna try with this one because it's gonna be a lot quicker and it's smaller. I'm just gonna tape it as I go. Maybe in the corners here. Now, since we reached the end of the light, the last step on this whole thing is to cut out a rectangle from the back of the frame so that the battery switch is easily accessible. So this is the back of the frame, right? So we want to cut out so that this comes out of it. Um, but maybe we don't have to because there's already little holes in this. So I'm, I'm glad that's one less step to do. 
so it looks like the light is not even reaching the middle <laughs> I can see from tiny spaces around it like you can see here the lights are on but because it's such a big gap here I don't think the light is reaching the middle okay so I changed the batteries on this and when I turn it on it's a lot better the thing is you can see the lights all around this more than you do in the center there's a lot of issues with this for sure Okay, so I finally finished this project. Actually, this is already the second day. Uh, to be honest with you, yesterday when I started this, I thought it was gonna take me like two hours. When I skimmed the instructions, it was like, oh, trace here and there, cut here and there, and then put it all together. Easy enough, not so easy. Uh, it took me like a total of like seven to eight hours to do this. Um, and I kept thinking, you know what, it's going to be so worth it in the end. Uh, I encountered so many issues with this. And I think the major problem comes from the book. The instructions, the material list, something is not right. So as you can see, when you look at this, something is off, right? The image is so tiny in, this, in such a big box. The end result is not the same as it is in the book and I'm gonna keep showing you this is what it's supposed to look like and this is what it looks like either the frame needs to be smaller or the templates need to be bigger in the future I might actually redo this whole thing I will either try to get a smaller shadow box or um, scan the templates to the computer and make them bigger but i don't, don't want to discard the whole book yet i've i've only done one diy from the book so i don't i don't want to say that the whole book sucks i might try to do other diy crafts from here and see if maybe the only issue was with this specific craft this is it what do you think of it when i light it up i don't think you can even see anything so do you have this book? Have you ever tried to make anything from this book? If so, please let me know in the comments which craft did you do and if it worked. And also let me know if you would like me to make any more DIYs from this book. I will attempt them for you. So yeah, this is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye bye.